Here I am with uh, my friend Chef Jackson Lamb at Metropolitan State University. And today, Chef Lamb is going to demonstrate how to use and calibrate a food thermometer. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're looking at different types of food thermometers. Real quick, what's with a food thermometer? Why is it important? Well, when we go through the cooking process, whether we're cooking vegetables or proteins or whatever it might be, everything really has to go to a required temperature. But we need to know where that temperature is. So take a look at what we have over here. I've got a couple of different types of thermometers. This unit here is an electronic thermometer, as is this one. We're really not gonna be concerned with these today. I wanna put these to the side, but they are available out there and they're expensive. The most common bimetal thermometers that we see in the industry are just like these guys here. And so these are called bimetal thermometers, but they become uncalibrated very easily. I'd just like to take a moment to show you how to calibrate a thermometer. Okay. So let's take this one here as I pull this out. And real quick before I do so, I'm sorry I didn't read what the temperature was, but when we take a look at this, we know that this ice water is not 60 degrees. Right. Wait a second, ice and water. Let's just get a good look on that. That's what the Board of Health likes to see to calibrate a thermometer. They feel, the Board of Health does, that ice and water like this is the equivalent of 32 degrees. Okay. So that said, let's come back here and I take a look at this one thermometer, it's reading 60 degrees. The thermometer says 60, I know the water, is 32. Right. Well, here's how this works. On the back here, I've got, there's a big nut on this one. On this one, there's a big, it's like a knurled knob, all right? Yep. So let's do, uh, let's do the nut first. Usually, if you've got a thermometer that's got a nut like this, it comes with a holder. This goes in my pocket in my chef uniform, but look at this, it's like a little wrench down here. Oh yeah, I see that, yep. So we're gonna just put this in here like so. Now, my hex nut is engaged into the wrench part. Let's just park that down there and see where that temperature goes. In the meantime, I'm not gonna take this one out of the water, but it does say that it's at 32 degrees. Okay. Well, wait a second, look this. Look at this, I can grab my knurled knob and I can twist this. Wait a second, I'm in water and now it says 65 degrees. We know that's not correct. Right. So what we'll do is readjust this one right back to the 32 degree mark. Okay, so you're just holding the back and turning the top, right? There it is. Yep, so I'm holding the top. This all rotates. So that's at 32 degrees. Where am I at over here? I'm still at 60, but look at this. I'm in the water. All I have to do is dial this. And I there I am at 32 degrees. Perfect. Now, Chef, why are there dimples in these thermometers? I see there's a little dimple on the side of them. So when you take a look at this thermometer here, Yep. It's bimetal. That's where one metal tab is, and the other metal tab is at the end here. I see that. So what's really happening is when you put this into a piece of meat, it's got to re get two readings and give you an average. Okay? Right. But here's what you can't do. You can't take this and stick it into a steak like this because now it's sticking out the bottom end. You're not reading anything. Right. So whether you're going to try to uh, test the temperature on a steak on a big porterhouse or even on a burger, I recommend that you take your thermometer and you come in from the side. Got it. And if you can do that, you're gonna get a very accurate reading and that's how it will read. Perfect. And this is Chef Jackson Lamb at Metro State University of Denver. Happy cooking, everybody. Thanks, Chef.